In part 20 of our build guide, we install the powertrain and fuse box. Before installing the powertrain, install the serpentine belt. If you eliminated the AC compressor, buy a replacement belt for a cobalt without the AC. This belt is 34 and a half inches long and has five ribs. Install the vacuum line that you cut earlier in the build. Use a coated clamp and a donor bolt to hold it to the intake manifold. Put a 5 16 vacuum cap on the port above the throttle body. Apply anti-seize to the threads inside the powertrain mount tubes and to the M14 bolts. Install the mount plate with the supplied hardware. Compare the plates to your powertrain to figure out how to orient them. Use a 22mm socket to run the mount bolts down, but don't tighten them yet. Do the same for the passenger side, but don't forget to install the spacers under the plate. Find the M10 bolts you removed from the front and rear seats of the donor. Park the powertrain behind the frame. With a furniture dolly at the front, two people can lift the frame over the powertrain. If you don't have a furniture dolly, a third person will need to carry the front. Lower the frame down until the mount plate rests on the powertrain. Use the donor seat bolts to connect the plates to the powertrain. Use a 15 mm socket to torque the bolts to 37 foot pounds. Use a 22 mm socket to torque the larger bolts to 100 foot pounds. Guide the main harness between the fuel tank and powertrain. Lay the main harness close to the engine, leaving the area over the transmission clear. Install the automatic transmission cable between the tank and the powertrain. Snap the cable into the metal brackets and onto the shift arm. Place the fuse box housing on top of the transmission and install the yellowish multi-plug. Make sure the starter cable is routed under the fuse box. Use a donor M6 bolt and nut to attach the fuse box to the transmission mount plate. Use two more donor bolts and nuts to attach the angled fuse box mount and a coated clamp to the frame. Install the rest of the fuse box multi plugs. Slide the ECM and TCM into the fuse box housing. Connect the ECM and TCM plugs. Make sure they are completely seated and then flip the lever to lock them in. Use a zip tie to attach the fuse box wires to the fuse box housing. Connect the large black and purple power plug to the main harness.
Remove the black fuse box multi-plug and remove its cover. Find the large black wire that you use to extend the radiator fan wire. Solder the black wire to the large light blue wire coming out of the multi-plug. Reinstall the black multi-plug. Install the fuse block on top of the fuse box housing. Make sure the plastic clips around the outside lock in place. Use a 7mm socket to tighten the multi-plug bolts. Connect the power steering wire at the rear of the fuse block. Slip the starter cable over the stud at the front of the fuse block. Use a 10mm socket to tighten the positive post. Install the fuse box cover. Pull the automatic shifter cable into the tunnel. From underneath the car, disconnect the starter wire and use a 13mm socket to remove the nut on the positive stud. Pull the main positive cable under the fuel tank and aim it up toward the starter. Bend the end of the positive cable and attach it to the starter stud. Tighten the nut and reconnect the starter wire. Pull the nylon vacuum line up to the vacuum hose coming from the intake. Cut the line where it meets the hose. Slip a number 6 clamp on the vacuum line. Insert the line into the hose and tighten the hose clamp. Use zip ties to bundle the wire harness, cables, and vacuum line. Loosen the brake T-nut and install a coated clamp around the large bundle. Cut the driver's side main hose 3 inches from the frame rail. Insert a 1 and 8 inch splice into the hose and tighten a clamp around it. Cut the long formed hose 17 inches from one end and 4 and half inches from the other as shown. Install the 4 inch end onto the splice with the hose clamp. Mark and cut the stock radiator hose where it meets the formed hose you just installed. Connect the two hoses with a one and a quarter splice. Connect a 17 inch long formed hose to the passenger side main hose. Install the large hose with a 60 degree bend onto the cylinder head water neck. Cut the upper end of the lower formed hose to match the top hose. Connect the hose with a one and a quarter splice. Use an 18 millimeter socket to remove the front motor mount bolt. Install the hose routing clamp to keep the hose off of the alternator pulley. Torque the bolt to 74 foot pounds. Before installing the fuel pump, carefully rotate the fuel lines to point the opposite direction. Then install the fuel pump seal. Lower the fuel pump down into the tank with fuel lines pointing toward the driver's side of the car. Slip the aluminum retainer ring over the fuel lines and onto the tank studs. Install the quarter inch nuts and washers. Use a 7 16 socket to tighten the nuts until the retainer is a quarter of an inch from the tank. Use a quarter inch drill bit or allen wrench to check the distance.
Connect the fuel pump plug. Connect the fuel filter to the fuel pump lines. Use a donor M8 bolt and a nut to attach the fuel filter to the fuse box housing as shown. Use a self-drilling screw and coated clamp to hold the lines to the fuse box above the fuel filter. Connect the supplied fuel line to the fuel rail. Use a donor M6 bolt and a coated clamp to hold the line to the valve cover. Route the line down behind the fuse box and guide the end between the transmission mount and the frame. Push the steel line into the fuel filter until it clicks. Use a coated clamp and a donor M6 bolt and nut to hold the fuel line to the fuse box housing. Loop the plastic clip of the coolant tank over the metal loop on the frame. Bolt the tank to the frame with a donor M6 bolt and nut. Disconnect the TCM plug. Connect a piece of 1 inch heater hose to the coolant tank. Reconnect the TCM plug. Cut the hose and attach it to the water neck as shown. Cut the overflow hose where it meets the overflow tank and install it with a clamp. In the next video, we'll crank up the engine for the first time.